I gotta find something to do. And there was a visiting professor from China who was visiting from uh, Colorado State, visiting a cousin of his, a bully. And I see talking to running a Chinese painting class at Carmel, High, at Carmel Library. So I took a 12 hour class. And then I did a 12 hour class, we had a student exhibit, and he said, well, you seem to have some talent. I said, I never painted before. And maybe because of my work, my eyes and my hands are fairly coordinated. So I said, do you want to continue? I said, yes. So he gave me a list of books, DVDs that I can order from China. And he said, just sit in front of your computer, copy, copy, copy. So Chinese painting is like copying. You copy to the point that you don't need to copy anymore. Then you form your own style. So Chinese painting is very different from Western painting. Okay? So that's the first thing. We copy. So my paintings are copies. You could say they're fake. Well, they are. But they are, that's, that's the way we learn. Anyway. Chinese do not paint from life like the Western painter. They observe the surrounding and paint what they understand. So if you see Chinese painting, the, the, the mountains are always very tall. But if you see where they copy from, they take a picture of the mountain, it's a normal picture. But when they paint, they paint like tall. And this is because they try to imagine what that mountain to him is about. And then the other thing is the actual painting writing is the same. We use a writing brush to paint and paint in the same way as we write. And I'll show you later. So prehistoric art, during Neolithic age, about 6,000 years ago, we found some potteries that they have painted human faces, fishes, and deers. And the changes of this, the growth of paintings related to time and social conditions. So prehistoric paintings were related to primitive crafts like pottery, bronzeware, jade, and lacquer. So this is a great story. This is ladies dancing. These are on earth in, uh, in a place called Ma, Ma Chia Chong, the pottery with ladies holding their hands dancing. Now, does it remind you of Native American or Incas, mm. this is about the same way we depicted, and this is about 6,000 years ago. Okay? And this fishes, white fishes, you see the fishes, they have motion, but it's still very primitive. But this is 5,000 years ago. Okay? These are carvings on rocks showing. Uh, Harvest time, you can see these are grains, and these are whatever they planted. And these are during the prehistoric period, 3000 BC. During the Bronze Age, they started believing in religious rites, and, you know, and zombies, and they also have production of, of, of grain activities in southern China. In northern China, it's more for hunt. The, the paintings or the carvings are more hunting and animal grazing and even war. And when silk was uh, made in about 400 BC, there were some silk paintings. And some of, some of these are part of the big paintings or part of a wall in the tomb. So you see only a little portion of it. Okay? Now, this is a silk painting. You can see. There's a warrior, he's, he's got a sword, he's fighting some kind of a mystical animal. And there's a, there's a fish underneath here. And he's got a mystical umbrella or a side canopy flying over, over his head. This is found in the tomb, and you can see the beginning painting of people in different types of clothing. And this 
many, many people, the rich people that die, they have all this treasure that go on over there with the burial, and this is under, uh, in the burial site. This is part of the entire wall. If you see that uh, people were painting horses and chariots, trees. Uh, this is a, not only a rich person, but probably an official of some kind. He's got an entourage, uh, you know, going in front of him and following him. People were depicted, not very realistic at the time, but this is it's still fairly primitive. You see, a chariot. Birds flying above. This is a silk clothing, and you can see in the silk clothing this is embroidery rather than painting. So embroidery and painting sort of go side by side, and you can tell that here, here's a bird, here's a fish, here's some kind of a tiger or some kind of a wild animal. So this is three Christ, okay? Qin Dynasty is still 200 years before Christ. By, by Qin Dynasty, Buddhism came through India and so has a lot of influence on the paintings. The characters painting on grottos and temples begin to have religious themes and the, the Indians will be painted as a very different type of people. And these are murals. Uh, I don't know if quite of many have seen the, the grottos. I was in the in, in, in the growth of 2012, it's amazing how the entire mountain was just filled with growth of paintings from several thousand years old. Yeah. Here's sort of, this is from a uh, Han Dynasty and it depicts almost like heaven and hell and earth. You can see different layers, this is probably earth. These are people, and then you have the underworld, and then you have heaven, and you have some uh, like angels. You see, you have dragon, and this is this is earth, and this is heaven, and it's a moon, it's a painting of a, of a bird. Now this is 200 BC. This is hell. This is below the earth. You can see, you know, what we Westerners call the, the devil. The, the Chinese devil looks like very a lot of wild growing beer. And this is the, the picture of flying angels, like women, but with wings like birds. And this is religious mythology. Another one is from a uh, wall. This is sort of a uh, mystical bird. Probably look like a golden pheasant with long tails. Then started having baby life. You have uh, this is from the Han Dynasty, from uh, Inner Mongolia. You can see uh, the painting actually has several plaques with a hundred people, orchestra, uh, playing music, orchestra playing music, you have uh, people performing, uh, you know, uh, acrobatics. This is carving, not painting on the wall, with the tigers pulling uh, the chair. This is from the coffin. And you can, again, you see it. Horse and some kind of water. Again, from silk, different ways of embroidery depicting pain. A warring state is the time after the death of the Qin Emperor. During, during this time, he was so dictatorial 
He demanded absolute uh, obedience. He burned books, and he actually murdered hundreds of scholars. So, for the whole time during his reign, the paintings, calligraphy, and literature was totally suppressed. During the war period, because all the generals, all the warriors were fighting each other, the 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 Chinese artists were a little bit free to promote their, their art. So there's a lot more painting, a lot more carvings. And the, the first painting book called Principal Strokes was published. So this is about uh, a couple hundred years after Christ. So if you notice, this is a more farmer attending a cow. This is a big 35 meter uh, painting on the wall on, uh, on women uh, during that time, like they were combing their hair, dressing, and all kinds of makeup. This is another one on the wall, uh, Chen Dynasty, with scholars singing, writing, playing music. And this is more folk art, the, the countryside, not the scholarly one. You could, you could tell that the pictures are not as refined, and, and the colors are not very nicely done. So in Tang Dynasty, this is the time when painting and literature flourished. The government of Tang was very encouraging uh, to, to scholars and they, they, they helped them grow. People who, uh, who work in the government all excel in writing, in poetry, in music, and painting. So you could be, a, you have a minister of war, but actually when he's not a minister of war, he sits, when he's sitting down in his office, he's painting or he's writing poetry. So it's a golden age of Chinese portrait, Chinese portrait painting. And, and then they started with ink and green landscape. If you notice, this is one of the grottoes. This doesn't look very Chinese, right? This is probably an Arab, because they're Arab influence. Yeah. This is sort of a llama. And bird paintings in the Warring States become if you notice, they are more realistic rather than, than, than primitive. This is one of the five cows on the wall during Tang Dynasty. I, I tried to copy this one, but it was never, never as good as the original. You can see somebody attending his, uh, his horse. You notice the starting to introduce some green. The mountains, the mountains don't exactly look like this, but it's the imagination of the painter. He just crowd the mountain this way into something this way and projected upwards. And started to introduce the concept of distance, something near you, something far away from you. You see the trees are a little larger here than here, and, and the rocks maybe slightly darker. And this is the first time they show a color picture in picture. You can see there's a painting inside another painting. And this is a gathering of four people playing chess. You can see they're playing chess and a kid attendant nearby. This is having a party. Thanks Chinese Thanksgiving. If you notice the tea, food, this is just a ball of the of the of that painting. And somebody playing music and the ladies are dancing. This is the boring boring state. This is another one of the multiple painting on the wall, part of it is uh, doing production of silk. You see, some doing spinning, some doing washing, some stretching. And this is when 
one of the famous ladies going into spring uh, uh, hunting, her entourage of horses. If you notice the way, that's a couple thousand years old, but the way they painted the horse was pretty remarkable. Now, in time and history, they started painting emperors. I don't think they ever really actually saw the faces of emperors, but they're allowed to. If you look up, you know, you hit yourself. You, you get killed. So what they do is they paint what they think the emperor should look like. If the emperor is a nasty uh, dictator, then they paint kill ugly beard, ugly eyes, ugly face. If he's a nice guy, they paint real nice, gentle eyes, gentle face. So this is this is Chin, Chin Wu, uh, Emperor Chin Wu. So when we come to Song and Yang, Song Dynasty is is uh, very uh, accommodating to scholars. They started painting academies in every town. That's ninth century. Every town established academies. Painters were given government ranks, government payroll, official uniforms, and painting of birds and flowers become uh, an independent discipline. The, the painters are now beginning to be recognized and they can actually start selling the paintings. They elevated the academies into imperial art academies, and 10 volumes of paintings were published at the time. This is all the, also the time when the gunpowder and printing press were invented. Yuan Dynasty, when the Mongols invaded China, they took over China, they wiped out entire population, they inserted Mongolian, every, supposedly every few families have to take care of one Mongol who just becomes a permanent resident in your house and you have to feed them and house them. But paintings were not uh, discouraged, so landscape painting was very good. And then the seals and poetry were added. Besides painting, people would write how they feel when you when you when you do a painting, when your friends come to enjoy your painting, they'll write down how they feel on your painting and they put on their seal. If they like you, they'll write it down. I guess if they don't like you, they won't write it. Anyway, this is the Sun Dynasty painting. You can see the mountains are tall. This is the near field, that's a far field. You can tell there's a slight uh, a slight feeling of distance because of the way they paint the clouds here. It makes this painting a little bit far away. Like this one, you can see the paintings are a little far away. This is a close view. This is just a magnification of the slow one. Again, these mountains are, they don't look exactly like that, but this is the way the, the, the painter sees it. Sometimes even just a tree becomes a masterpiece. This is a weird looking tree, the way the spirals of the tree. And you can see how many seals are there. This is not just a painter, but whoever sees it, who likes it, they put the seal on That's why I guess we have a question and say, you put your seal on it and you just prove it, right? Yeah. The song, five horses. This is the way to pick the horse. This is a little, a little realistic fat, but that's the way they see it, and you can see this is not a Chinese, this is another Arab. Now this is a very famous painting in Sun Dynasty, it's called uh, Listing the, the Qingming Festival. This is a festival for the death, you, you go to uh, honor your, your people that pass away, and painting them. Thousands of people, and this is just one little part of the painting. The entire town is painted in the scroll on the entire wall. So that one, look at it. You have dynasty, people who look at it, they write their poetry, they appreciate the painting, they put on their seal. And this is another, this is just a small part of the long painting. You notice there's a beginning changes of color. There's a little more color, green, red, yellow. 
even the flower is a little bit more realistic, two to size. Again, poetry is written more in the Yuan Dynasty. And this is plum blossom, which is sort of a Chinese blossom of flower. Rocks and, 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 and plants. The good guys look nice and benign, bad guys look really ugly and mean. So close to us, 1300 to 1900. Started to have different schools of painting, some traditional, some freestyles. Some Chinese revolutionaries went to Japan to establish the revolutionary uh, cells uh, when they had nothing else to do, they learned painting and they came back to China, mostly southern China, and they started a different school called Lingla style, which is incorporating some Japanese style of painting, which is more colorful. This is Ming Dynasty, you can see again, blossoms, plum blossoms, birds, trees, a little bit more crisp, use of colors, a little more, and they put the whole story. Now you can tell the, the impression of distance is now a little bit more pronounced. You can tell this is pretty far away, right? This is very close to you. This is again the scholars painting. They usually have little young kids, but boys by the side, little butlers. Painting of beautiful ladies in very colorful costumes. This is being nice. And architectures are beginning to be nicely done. Again, this is freestyle, or called freestyle, freeform mountain. You don't go the entire mountain, just one single stroke across gets the entire mountain. And here's the more detail expression of mountains and plants and trees and rocks. Here, again, a big dynasty painting, mostly landscape, a little bit more colorful. And certain strokes are, are defined. How trees should be, should be painted and how, how ladies should paint. So this is about the late 1800s and early 1900s, Qing dynasty. The horse is a little thinner, not as big in fact as the Qing dynasty. You can see pronounced color. This is Japanese influence called Lingman style. And beautiful ladies and kids playing around. Family out there. Again, Qing Dynasty painting for the scholar. Now, this, now the freehand. You can see you don't have individual detail. Even the leaves are freehand. Just one stroke. And you have a leaf. Uh, one little stroke, you have it. You have the fruits and the paintings on the on ceramics. Modern China from 1911 to the present time. During the Japanese during the Second World War, a lot of paintings were depicting, you know, being uh, being refugee, being running around, uh, being bombed, being shot up. And then in the 1950s to 1970s, when communist China took over, they followed the Soviet style. And then since the 1980s, they, they sort of opened and the people are now again being able to free to express. Now this is during the time when, during Japanese occupation, people had, didn't have proper clothes to wear. And this is a painting of saying they're trying to move a mountain. The whole, the whole population is moving a mountain with not, nothing to wear or eat except this little kid. This is more in the, during the communist era. These are the, the people, the street, the street people. This is during the fight against the, against the Japanese. More modern, peaceful time, nice harvest. This is the influence of painters. See, I see this. He started painting when he was 72. I started painting when I was 73. So <laughs> So he beats me by one year. Uh, this sleeping home, he's a super painter for horses. What he did was he thinned out the horses and stretched them out and it made them dynamic. I don't know about this 
one big long, but this Chan Da Chan is also a very famous painting. This is Ji Bai Xin. So he is a one stroke paint. His flower, one stroke, one pebble. With instead of Uli in video. Even his birds, this is a this is a slotus. This Ji Pihong is look at the dynamic dynamic uh, feeling of this horse. As this as if this horse is going to jump on it. I copied a lot of his horses. Uh, I have not copied this Mr. Wong's because it's so so detailed, so delicate, it's very hard to copy. I copied a few of Chang Da, Chan, Chan da Chen's Lotus painting too. It's one of the most famous. I think he made one or two that, that brought in, you know, one or two million dollars oh, yeah. in London. Wow. Okay. So that's all for the paintings. Can you turn some lights? Yes. <coughs> so I'm gonna give you some actual paintings to, to look at. A copy crane the mountain. Now Lim Shua's artwork is very much relished by a lot of people in this city. This is simple freestyle, freestyle, one stroke. This is mountain, trees, and water. This is shrimp in different shapes. So as a surprise, these are presents for you. Oh, oh, oh thank you. Thank you. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one change it. You have a, you have a chance to change it. You can come up and look. If you don't like the one that you have, you can change it. It's a tiger. This is a Chinese orchid. In the Chinese paintings, they are called four gentlemen. The orchid, Chinese orchid, bamboo, uh, plum blossom, pine, and, and the pine. I'm sorry? The pine, pine tree. Pine tree. Oh, pine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's just kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I have something for you to practice on with magic paper. Come on. This is a magic pen. This is a Chinese invention of a Western pen. Instead of ink, you load it with water. You can see, I can sprinkle the water. You can see you. Okay. In, in order to, to look a little bit less smooth, like a real tree, you, you, shake, it, you shake your brush. So like six feet. So, I know. so, thank you.